Artists along the Golden Road experience the Northwest through its art and the artists who live here. Northwest artists are passionate about art, and Golden Road Arts extends their passion through education. We're on an arts mission, introducing children to art. The Golden Road Arts nonprofit and Northwest artists help us provide our instruction free for children, encouraging and supporting the arts and arts education now and for the future. Now the next artist we're going to talk about is Hiroshigi. So Hiroshigi lived longer than Hokusai. So Hokusai really, I want to talk a little, uh, go back to him for just a minute. So one of the things that they did, because they used most of these drawings, uh, woodblock prints for advertisements, they used them, um, they were mostly for the theater and for beautiful women. And they really, it really wasn't a lot of landscape. But Hokusai did a lot of landscapes, and so he sort of got that started. And then when Hiroshiki came along, he continued with that, and um, his work is almost entirely landscapes. I'm going to show you his drawings. He did 53 views of the Tokaido. The Tokaido is a road in Japan. It goes from Tokyo, which at that time was called Edo, to Kyoto. And um, it goes pretty much along the coast, this road. This is the most famous road. This is called the Tokaido. The image that I've chose from him to do, that we're going to copy here, is an image of uh, a landscape image of a tree and a boat and Mount Fuji, of course, which everybody did Mount Fuji. Um, so you can see here I've done this one in um, pencil. And I've done this one in markers. And I've done this one in crayons. And look at how different they look. Now, it's the same drawing. It's just the same drawing, but look at how different it looks. This is the crayons. This is the marker, and this is the pencil. The marker is much brighter, but there aren't very many colors, so it made it kind of hard to decide um, what colors to use so that it, you could really see it. And then watercolor really is uh, probably the right um, the right thing to do this. So we're going to do this one in watercolor. And we'll just um, make the water blue. And then you know when you have water and you have sky, what happens is um, it's pretty much the same color. The sky is reflected by the water. So your sky and your water can really be the same color. So you notice when I'm painting that I'm just using the point of the brush and I'm laying it down and picking it up and I'm not scrubbing it around, I'm being very careful, just using the point. So now we'll do the sky. So when you go outside and you look at the sky and you're by water, can you see if the sky and the water are the same color? Sometimes. You know, we live here in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon and our water is, um, our water is often pretty gray and it reflects our sky which is also pretty gray. So we don't want to paint Mount Fuji. We don't want it to be blue. We're going to find another color for it. Okay, so there we are. Pretty much got everything here. And I, at first I thought these little things at the top were birds, but I don't think they're birds. I think they're, I don't know what they are. Maybe they're leaves. These little white things at the top. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to have green for our tree. And you can just follow the outline of this. And it's your work, you know, so you can do it any way you want. You don't 
exactly follow the lines, it doesn't matter. Or you can be real careful and follow the lines perfectly. So I think these bushes down here are also green. So we're going to have green bushes. And then our, um, we're probably going to have Probably going to have a little brown for our tree chunk. Maybe our land will be brown. Okay, so we're painting our land kind of brown here, maybe with a little green mixed in. We've got different bushes here. Maybe we'll do our mountain next. Sometimes if you do things that are too close together, it just bleeds together. So we'll do Mount Fuji purple. So instead of a red Fuji, we'll have a purple Fuji. So about 30 years ago, I started to study woodblock printmaking. It's hard to do, very hard to do. And um, I probably will never, ever, never, ever show it as an artist. But I sure like doing it. It's very fun. And we're going to find a, um, we're going to find an image on the internet where they're actually printing it. So we can show you what it looks like when you're printing it. We got our hills blue here. So I don't know what the actual colors are, but since this is my artwork, I can make it any color I want. That's a great thing about art. It's kind of hard to do it wrong. Okay, and then we'll get some, we'll get some tan color here for our, for our, oh, it's kind of green. We'll get some color here for our. sand in our flowers in the foreground. So you want to wait a little bit before you put two colors together so they don't bleed one into the other. So the fun thing about these um, images where you're just filling in the colors is you can make it any color you want. I was like making it any color. You know, when I was really young, they had, um, I'm sure you've maybe seen these, or they have paint by number sets where you get the picture and there's all these little squares and they have little numbers in them and you're supposed to put the paint the number a certain color and um, and I always um, put the wrong color in the wrong number I don't know I just kind of wanted to do it my own way so it never really looked like what it was supposed to look like because of course I did the colors wrong but I liked it so that's all that mattered and I guess that's what makes us artists we get to do things our own way Okay, so now we have made this really interesting landscape here. And when you do something and you copy work of somebody who's famous, when you sign the work, if I was going to sign this work and show it in a gallery, I would say, after Hiroshigi. That would mean that I copied his work. It would be maybe not exactly like his work, but it would mean that I used that work to um, copy to start with and um, it's just something that you do so that you don't you don't want to be stealing somebody else's work you just want to be borrowing it now one of the things that I want to show you is um, this is a book that Hiroshigi did this is what's called a accordion book 
And so what that means is that all the pages are hooked together. It's just a long book and all the pages are hooked together. And this whole book is about fish. Look at these fish. Isn't this amazing? So each one of these is a separate page and um, it's fish. So these are um, images of Hiroshigi. And I don't know if this book was originally published like this, but it probably was. So you can imagine that if he did this book and sold it in Japan, how excited people would be to have this whole book, A Beautiful Fish by Hiroshigi. And the other thing that, that you see a lot in Japan that we don't see in our artwork is they would write a poem. And I, I don't know what this poem says because I can't read Japanese, but it probably says something lovely about the fish and the um, stream and, and um, maybe dinner, I don't know, but it's probably a nice poem. So a lot of these um, pieces from Japan have poems in them. But I just wanted to show you this because I thought it was so interesting that the book is all hooked together. So instead of being books like our book is, all of these pages are separate. So they come apart like this. And this one is blank on the back. But this side has all the fish in it. And you just open it up and it just goes on and on and on. So this is a really long um, accordion book. So you've learned a little bit about Japan, a little bit about um, woodblock printmaking. And at the end of this, when we um, edit this, we are going to find on the internet um, a sample of somebody printing something with actual wood blocks. It's very hard to do. It's not something that you can just say, okay, today I'm going to print wood blocks. It takes a long time to learn it. It takes a long time to be very good at it. And carving the wood is very, very hard. Um, when you're in school, sometimes when you get to be the fifth or sixth grade, you can carve linoleum, and linoleum is pretty easy to carve. But wood is very hard to carve. It's very, you know, you can imagine how hard it is, how sharp your tools have to be. Very hard to do. But we're going to show you how it's done so you can see it. And um, the carvings are very beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed a little bit uh, this uh, talk about Hokusai and Hiroshigi. Both of them very famous men, both of them uh, well more than 200 years ago. And yet their work is still so famous. So thanks for joining me at Golden Road, and um, I'll see you next time.